for the Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young, 19 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists. He's going to be the leading scorer, along with Toreen Prince, 19 points on 5 for 8 from downtown. And the Oklahoma City Thunder, at home, beat the Memphis Grizzlies, who just traded the majority of their team, 117-95. to This is Russell Westbrook's 8th straight triple-double. That's the record, or actually I guess it's the most since Wilt Chamberlain in like 1969 or 68 when he had 9 straight. But uh, before yesterday, Russell Westbrook had had 7 straight 3 different times, uh, which also tied Michael Jordan's record um, in the 88-89 season, I want to say. I'm pretty sure he had 7 straight triple-doubles as well. Uh, Russell Westbrook breaks that tie with his eighth triple double of the season in this one. 15 point, 15 assist, 13 rebound. Tough shooting night again, 5 for 16, but always able to impact the game, at least in those three categories. Paul George is the leading scorer in the victory, 27 points, 5 rebounds on 6 for 13 from downtown. In the loss, um, Memphis only plays eight players in the loss. Mike Conley. Still there, 15 points, 7 assists game, 4 for 15 from downtown. Not the best game of his career, but I'm sure he's at least happy to still be in Memphis. The leading scorer for them, Jaron Jackson Jr., 27 points, 7 rebounds on 12 for 18 shooting. And in Boston, this was probably the game of the night, the Lakers beat the Boston Celtics 129-128. to Rondo makes the first uh, buzzer-beating jumper of his entire career to win the game. Ex-Celtic, Rajon Rondo with a buzzer-beating jump shot to win the game. Uh, I saw a statistic that he was 0 for 11 in his entire career at that same uh, st- same statistic, the buzzer-beating jump shot. Never made one in his career. Just so happens to make one in his return to Boston. In the victory, LeBron James, big triple-double, 28 points, 12 rebounds, 12 assists. Five, 5 for 10 from downtown. Fantastic game for him. Kyle Kuzma chips in with 25 points on 5 for 8 shooting from 3-pointer as well. And speaking of Rondo, I mean, he, he's really stepped up his shooting just overall. 17 points, 7 rebounds, 10 assists for him. 3 for 4 from downtown. 7 for 11 overall. Rondo is a legitimate point guard at this point. He was you know, getting a lot of knocks because he couldn't shoot maybe even three or four years ago. But legitimately, he's, he's a different shooter now. He's a different player now than he ever has been. In the loss, the Celtics are led by Kyrie Irving. 24 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, 6 for 21 shooting. Tough night. He gave a lot of kudos to Brandon Ingram uh, after the game. Brandon Ingram, I guess, held him to like 2 for 9 shooting or something like that when he deed him up. Uh, really good defensive game for Ingram. 22 points, 10 rebounds for Jason Tatum, and uh, 20 points off the bench for Daniel Tice in the loss, though. All right, one more game from last night. The Portland Trail Blazers at home hand the San Antonio Spurs their third straight loss, 127 to 118. C.J. McCollum, seven three-pointers, and that's going to give him 30 points on the night, nine rebounds, but seven for 13 from downtown. Fantastic game. 0 for 7 for downtown, from downtown, for Damian Lillard. 24.9 assist performance for him still. 10 for 20 overall, but that 0 for 7 night, that's not something you normally see from Lillard. In the loss, DeMar DeRozan, 35 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. Didn't take a single 3, typical DeMar DeRozan there. 14 for 28 shooting. Rudy Gay, 5 for 6 from downtown, 25 points in the loss as well. Quite a few games tonight, honestly, after the trade deadline. A couple of really good ones. We're going to start at 5 o'clock. The Detroit Pistons at home hosting losers of 14 straight games, the New York Knicks. Um, Like I said, the Knicks are the worst team in the league right now. They've lost 14 straight games. Uh, They really, they have very few bright spots. I guess Dennis Smith Jr. is is their best player at this point, and I guess that's okay. Uh, Frank Nilekina is not going to play in this game. Everybody looks to be... Possibly in the game, Thon Maker, if he is with the team, looks like he's going to play for Detroit. Detroit's going to be an 8.5-point favorite at home, and ESPN's going to give him a 78% chance of winning the game. Also at 5 o'clock, this one on ESPN, the Philadelphia 76ers, uh, with their newly acquired roster and or players, host the Denver Nuggets, losers of back-to-back games. 
Um, Isaiah Thomas is actually – he's going to be out in the game, but he is actually uh, going to be designated a G League assignment, I'm pretty sure. And so it's possible that Isaiah Thomas could be back with the Nuggets in as little as a week or two. Gary Harris is going to miss the game for sure. And for the Sixers, they're going to be without Jonathan Simmons, the player they just got from Markel Fultz. They're going to be without uh, Justin Patton. It says Embiid is day-to-day, but I imagine he's going to play. Uh, Mike Scott also day-to-day. I would imagine he's going to play as well. Philadelphia is going to be favored by 4.5 at home. I think I said that. And ESPN has him at a 60% clip to win the game. Also, 5 o'clock in Washington. This is going to be a tough one to watch. The Cleveland Cavaliers head to Washington to take on the Washington Wizards. Um, Not much positive to say about these guys. Bradley Beal is still with the Washington Wizards. I think that's good for Wizards fans. Wizards, uh, The Wizards did dump Otto Porter. Uh, Who else did they lose yesterday? They they dumped a few players there. Um, Obviously had getting rid of Oubre earlier in the season. They are going to be bringing back Jabari Parker and Bobby Portis. You know, both of those guys could be good. I actually think that Jabari Parker will end up being one of the leading scorers for the team this year, or at least in the second half of the season. Um, Wesley Johnson as well. Yeah, they got him too. Uh, Both of those guys are day-to-day. I'm not sure if they're with the team at this point. If they are, they'll probably end up playing. For the Cavaliers, K-Love is out, Tristan Thompson's out, Chidi Osman and Brandon Knight are both day-to-day. I think that they're both questionable. If Knight's with the team, he's going to play. The Wizards are going to be favored by 9.5 at home. And ESPN gives him a 78% chance to win the game. All right, to 5.30. In Brooklyn, the Brooklyn Nets host the Chicago Bulls, trying to become the worst team in the NBA. Um, Wow, Chris LeVert is going to play in this game. Chris LeVert is going to play in the... Oh, wait. No, it says right here he's going to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's missed almost three months, and he is going to be returning Friday night. He was the leading scorer for the team at 18.4 points per game when he got hurt on November 12th. Um, That's that's pretty incredible. The Nets actually basically have the same record that they had before. They were two games over 500, and now they are still two games over 500. So they, they actually played pretty well without Chris LeVert. He's going to be coming back. I like this game for... The, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. They're going to be favored by 8.5 points over Chicago. ESPN gives them an 80% chance to win the game. For the Bulls, uh, Otto Porter doesn't look like he's going to be with the team in time to play. Uh, Zach Levine, it says, is questionable, but he'll probably play. And Robin Lopez says it's questionable. He probably won't play. I think that they're still trying to find a way to buy him out. Uh, Jared Dudley is going to be the only person missing the game for Brooklyn. Uh, 6.30 p.m. in Dallas. We have the Mavericks hosting the number one team in the Eastern Conference, the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, I don't think Miritich is going to play in this game. It does say he's out. George Hill, Sterling Brown, Chris Middleton, and Giannis all are questionable. I do believe most of those guys are going to play, at least Middleton and Giannis. Justin Jackson, the recent recent player that the uh, Mavs got in a trade, it looks like he's going to be questionable, not possibly with the team right now. Um, Milwaukee's going to be favored by eight points on the road. ESPN's given him a 66% chance to win. All right, to 7 o'clock. The Phoenix Suns host the back-to-back champ, Golden State Warriors. Um, The Suns have lost 17 straight games to the Warriors. They've lost 12 straight games right now overall. The Warriors look like they're about as good as they possibly could be. They have literally no players on the injury report. Um, Full strength there. T.J. Warren, DeAnthony Melton are going to miss the game for Phoenix. And Devin Booker is actually questionable. I would expect him to play, but you never know. This one's going to be a tough one to watch uh, unless you just want to see a beatdown. I bet Boogie and one of... Either Clay or Steph goes off heavy in this game. Golden State's going to be favored by 15.5 on the road, and ESPN likes them at an 86% chance to win the game. And 
And to the second half of ESPN's doubleheader for the night, we have the New Orleans Pelicans. I guess Anthony Davis is going to play. The Pelicans put out a release saying that the he's going to play the rest of the season. They had thought about obviously shutting him down. Um, but he's going to play except no back-to-backs and no more than 37, point, or 37 minutes a night. I think... Actually, always 100% less than 37 minutes per night. I'm not 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 100% sure on that one. I do know that they said that that was what he was averaging this year. Uh, so I think that they're just going to try to limit him as much as possible. But he is going to play tonight when they host the Minnesota Timberwolves in this one. Um, T-Wolves just played last night, got beat in Orlando. Uh, tough game for them. This is saying Anthony Davis is out, but I'm pretty sure he's going to play. Alfred Alfred Payton and each one more are going to be out. And then Stanley Johnson and Jason Smith, I don't think, are with the team yet. For the T-Wolves, Jeff Teague, Robert Covington, Tyus Jones, all still out. And Jared Bayless and Jared Terrell, both questionable for this game. New Orleans is going to be favored by six points. And ESPN gives them a 69% chance to win the game. All right, and to the last game of the night in Sacramento. It'll be interesting to watch this, actually. The Kings host the Miami Heat. Um, The Kings are going to be with everybody except for Caleb Swanigan, who they just traded for yesterday. So I do believe that uh, that gives them... um, Harrison Barnes is going to play. Who else did they trade for? I don't remember, but they are going to have basically their full roster here. Um... The Heat as well. They have nobody on injured reserve or on the injury report at all, so they're going to have everybody. They didn't really make any moves, but uh, both teams are going to be basically a full clip here. Sacramento is going to be favored by three points at home. I think they've won three straight games as well. Uh, Two games over 500 at 54 games into the season. Sacramento's for real. They got a real shot at making the playoffs, especially with their additions. Um, Like I said, they're favored by three, and ESPN gives them a 54% chance to win the game. And before I let you guys go, we got our top 10 power rankings, and then we're going to get you underway. Not a lot of changes this week. Looking at them right, actually there are, more more so than last week. We've got a couple of people dropping. Um, and some Eastern Conference finally getting a little bit more respect. My bad, guys, my bad. So, let's start at, uh, I think we start at number 10. I don't know, my bad, y'all. Number 10, same team as last week. We have the Houston Rockets. They actually won all three of their games this week. Won seven of the last ten. Looking damn good, obviously, with Kenneth Fareed. Once they can get back Clint Capella and once they can get him on Shumpert into the rotation, you got to really like Houston. I could definitely see him being higher than this in the near future, but right now I have him down to number 10. And number nine, same team as last week again. We got the Utah Jazz. They, I think, went 2-1 and one this week. Still won seven of their last ten. Uh, and a 3.1 point differential, a little bit higher than Houston. And they're climbing up. They're only a game and a half behind Houston in the standings. Better defensive team. Didn't really make any changes at the at the trade deadline. Um, could have been helped with a, by a Mike Conley deal or something like that. But I still think that they are a bit of a force to be reckoned with in the Western Conference. And I have them at number nine overall. Number eight, the same team as last week as well. The number four seed in the Western Conference, the Portland Trailblazers. They go two and one on the week. Also, seven of their last ten. All of the three teams that I just mentioned uh, remain the same distance apart as they were ten games ago. Uh, Portland with a three-point point differential. That's actually less than Utah. It's one reason I really, really am pretty high on Utah. Obviously, I have Portland higher, but it's because they are two and a half games above Utah right now, and they've been consistent the entire season. Uh, And I think that the best player on either team is Damian Lillard. All right, to number seven. This is a different team. And this one's actually, this, this is where it gets pretty damn tough. This week, with all the trades that had been made, honestly, this becomes pretty difficult to, to round out these top seven teams. Um, I really like all of them, but at seven, I have the Philadelphia 76ers, even after their myriad of trades, one of them, which landed Tobias Harris, a legitimate all-star. Uh, they have lost back-to-back games though, in just six of their last 10, got a 3.2 point differential. So that's definitely pretty damn good for them, but that's actually weaker than all of the other teams in the Eastern conference. 